Welcome back to the rocket tutorial series. This is part four. If you were following along in the last tutorial, we were creating a collidable asteroid that we are going to be able to fly around and destroy with our ship. Uh, but for now, we're going to continue building on this asteroid uh, from where we left off, which uh, if you didn't follow along, let me just recap real quick. We added, uh, first off, we found this asteroid on the asset store for free. And then we pulled it out of the LOD, as you can see in the naming convention here, which is a remnant of the asset that we got. Uh, and then we added a rigid body. We turned off use gravity so that it wouldn't fall like that. And then we added a sphere collider and we checked off use or is trigger so that instead of causing physics effects when it hits things, it just fires off a method. And finally, we added an asteroid controller script. In this asteroid controller script, we added a reference to a big explosion effect, which is part of an asset pack that we got previously called effects, effects examples, I guess, from Unity. Um, and then um, our asteroid controller script fires off that big explosion anytime your, our asteroid collides with something else. So it has to collide with something else that has that sphere collider or that has a collider on it. And we get this nice big explosion. Clearly in space, the explosion effect wouldn't fly up. So that's something maybe we can tackle in a future episode. It's a really small thing, uh, but here we're going to go on to work out how to um, instantiate new explosion or new asteroids as this thing collides with other asteroids. So if you were following along, this is what you should have in your script. We have our reference to our explosion effect. We have an empty start, empty update methods. We have an on trigger, which fires off with that collision set to a trigger. Uh, then we have, uh, we turn off our sphere collider when we do collide with something. We play it, our explosion effect um, with this IE numerator or this coroutine. And in here, we instantiate our explosion effect, set it to our asteroid's position, and we call play on the particle system. We wait one and a half seconds, which I estimated is approximately the amount of time that that particle system is playing. You can always go into the particle system and find out uh, how long it plays um, just by playing it in the editor or looking at its life. And we destroy the explosion after that one and a half seconds. Here I've commented out uh, our destroy game object so our asteroid does not get destroyed. Uh, but I think we can start to um, uncomment this and deal with our asteroid um, ex, uh, dis destroying itself and then instantiating other objects. Actually, instantiating other asteroids and then destroying itself. So there, it's all gone. So let's go and start with a new method here where after we've triggered our collision, um, we're going to generate new asteroids generate new asteroids and i'm just going to right click quick actions hit enter on the first option so it generates a new method for me and in here the idea will be to first come up with a random number of asteroids that we want to create so create a random number of new asteroids. So this will be a little pseudocode so that we know how we're going to do this. Start a loop from zero to number of asteroids to instantiate. And then instantiate new asteroids. Uh, clearly there's going to be more to it than this, but I will just start with this for now. So num asteroids, oops, num asteroids equals, we are going to use a method from the math 
uh, math namespace called floor. It's a static method which will just give us a whole, the lowest whole number of a um, of a float. So then we're also going to use a method called random dot range, and I'm going to just say off the top of my head I'll want between two and six asteroids. You can see here random is underlined, and that's because C sharp has a random method, and Unity Engine also has a random method. I'm going to use Unity's right now, so I'm just going to go to quick, to quick. Yeah. Okay. So. I went ahead and did that. It's It added this Unity Engine namespace to my random method, so that's no longer ambiguous. But you can see I set this number of asteroids to an integer, but math floor returns a, uh, let's see, it returns a float. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast this float as an integer. So I'm just adding the int in parens right before the method will cast my float, which is a decimal number, into a whole integer. So that solves that. Now I'm going to start a for loop, and I'm just going to create int i equals zero, while i is less than the num asteroids, so number of asteroids. And I'm going to increase the value of i. So every time this runs through and does all the logic in this for loop, it's going to check to see whether the i value is less than the number of asteroids, and it's going to increase i by 1. Uh, the plus plus there just means plus 1. And you can use that on any integer um, or any numeric value type. So now here, an interesting trick um, is I'm going to instantiate a new asteroid but I'm going to instantiate this asteroid based off of the current asteroid. And I'm gonna instantiate it in the same place as this asteroid. Quaternion identity, that just means it's not rotating. Uh, there's no rotation from it. This, we're gonna instantiate this game object in the same position and with the same rotation should be zero and then we're going to get a no this maybe I should do this as well let's scale our new asteroid randomly so that way our asteroid will not be the same size as the asteroid that exploded clearly that's not possible so I'm just going to create a new variable called random scale and again, we're going to call the random range method. And I'm going to do between 0.25 and 1.5. Now I'm hard coding these values just for the sake of this tutorial, but uh, you should probably never really hard code or, or rely on hard coded values. You should make these editor properties that you could fine tune as you're playing. So again, you see random is an ambiguous call. Now there's another there's another uh, solution here, which is to assign a using statement to random in the top. We could certainly do that, and that would fix all random calls. So I went ahead and chose that, and I will erase the Unity Engine reference here. <coughs> okay, so now we are getting a random scale. So what we're going to do is with our new asteroid, we're going to change its local local scale to this new random scale. Um, well, there's a couple ways we can do this. I'll do vector 3.1. So that gives us a vector that's got all ones as values in its xyz. And I'm just going to multiply it by our random scale. And that will scale this object up or down. And actually, I forgot to call transform here. Local scale is part of the transform of an object. Okay, so now let's position our asteroid. So we're going to call asteroid.transform.position and we will set it at a 
Now this is also going to use the random dot inside unit sphere. So this is going to put our asteroid in a random location within kind of the sphere um, or a generic unit sphere. Um, but so this will give us a random position in kind of a sphere, which is a really interesting, um, a really interesting method or idea here. So we'll do this plus our current position. So it's going to take the current position of the current asteroid we're in. It's going to create a random position within a, a zero to one unit sphere and multiply it by two. So it'll be zero to two. So you can just imagine this being inside a ball and just finding any edge and any random part of the surface of that ball and putting our object there plus the transform. So um, if you didn't use plus, uh, I'm sorry, plus a, a transform position, if you didn't use this, it would start at world coordinate zero, 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 and then have a random position in that world coordinate. So this is just the random position of our current asteroid inside a unit sphere of that current asteroid or a unit sphere multiplied to, by two. So now let's actually, oops, let's actually move our object. So actually, um, just thinking through this, our position right now, since we're making a 2D game, is in 3D space. So it uses the Z as well as X and Y. And we really want it to just use the X and Y and not Z. So we're going to create a new vector three and it's going to be our asteroid dot transform dot position dot X. And we can probably just copy all of this and paste. And this will be dot Y. And then for Z, we're going to zero it out. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and, well, let's just have a look and see where we are right now with this. Okay, so I'll let the editor recompile all our scripts. I'm gonna hit play, select my asteroid and crash it into another one. So now we have a bunch more asteroids here. So you can see uh, one of the things that happened. We've got these new asteroids, which is cool. Um, but all of the sphere colliders are turned off on them. So if we were to select them all, turn the sphere colliders back on, grab one, we can crash it into another one. So there we go. We are instantiating new asteroids here. Um, eventually we'll just have so many of these things that it will be unmanageable. Um, however, uh, one of the nice things about asteroids is that once they collide, they start flying off in different directions. So let's see if we can do that real quick. So we'll get back here. We will uh, move our asteroids in random directions. So how do we do that? Um, so let's pick a random direction. We're going to just create a vector three. We'll call it rand direction. It's a really unique name there. And I'm going to say asteroid.transform dot position and then we'll subtract that from current transform dot position so our new asteroids position minus the original asteroids position and then we're going to normalize that so if the position difference is whoops, normalize if the position difference is where can I normalize there we go so if the position difference is like 10, it's going to normalize it and bring it down between 0 and 1. Um, if it's 2.5, it'll bring it down to 0.25. So just between 0 and 1. And then we're going to multiply that by a random value. 
times 10. And let's have a look at what random value does real quick. So you just roll over, it's a random number between 0, 0.0 and 1.0, and we're multiplying it by 10. So now we're going to call the asteroid. We're going to get our rigid body component. And we're going to set its velocity equal to that random direction. OK. So hopefully that makes sense. Get the random direction, and then we set the velocity in the rigid body to that random direction. All right, let's test this. There we go. So you saw our original asteroids exploded and disappeared. And our new ones are floating off into the infinite abyss. Let's do it again. Boom. OK, so we've got some motion kind of cool. OK, so another issue that we had was that our sphere colliders are set to uh, they're, they're set to disabled because when we instantiated this um, here we instantiated this game object the generate new asteroids happens after play explosion which also happens after get component sphere collider enabled equals false so because we disabled the sphere collider, um, we no longer have a collision. So let's go ahead and just we can copy this and paste it down here and we can call it on our new asteroid. And instead of false, we can set it to true. And another nifty thing we'll probably want to do is we've we've been looking at these asteroids collide and the original asteroids are still visible even after they collide and they only disappear after um after one and a half seconds whoa so i just crashed unity okay so uh let's not set the sphere collider enabled to true just yet so once the asteroids are intersecting, if they're set to true and they continue generating new asteroids, which are still intersecting, you will have all sorts of havoc. Your computer will likely stop um, just because it'll be generating an infinite number of asteroids. So there we go. We've got our asteroids. We got them flying in different directions. We're going to do a quick trick here. Um, just as we have this collision, we're also going to get component on our current asteroid, get the mesh renderer, and set so it's enabled to false. Um, so as we set this enabled to false, down here in our new asteroid, we will want to set it's enabled to true. And we want to make sure we are referencing the asteroid. There we go. True. Okay. So now our two original asteroids, the parents, should disappear right away. There we go. Okay. Okay, uh, next up, I think we're going to handle, let's see, turning on the collider so that they will collide again. Initially, we want that collider turned off. Um, but as we come in to our asteroid, we want to enable the collider. So there are a couple different ways to do it. Uh, I'm going to just invoke a method invoke we'll call this enable collider 
And we'll do it after one second, hoping that one second is enough for the asteroid to get away from another asteroid. Enable Collider. And in here, we are going to do Get Component, uh, Sphere Collider. Oops. Sphere Collider. Dot enabled equals true. Okay, so that should allow us to start colliding again. Uh, another thing we want to do is make sure that if our asteroids go off screen, we get them back on screen. So uh, with our rocket, it's going to be very similar code. We were basically just getting the screen position from cam world to... Uh, you don't have a reference to our camera. Let's get a reference to our camera real quick. So it's just going to be cam. Oh, hold on. It's just a private, private camera cam. Here we're going to say cam equals camera dot main. And then down here in our update, it's, sorry, I'm scrolling around kind of quick, but in our update, I'm just going to call cam, and it's going to be world to screen point, world to screen point, and we're just going to make sure that if it wraps around one side, we are going to um, push it to the other side. Transform dot position. Really hard to type with uh, not being able to even see my keyboard and peripheral. Screen position Y is greater than zero. Then we're going to move our screen position dot Y equal to one. Else if our screen position dot Y is, I'm sorry, before it was yeah, less than zero, and if it's greater than one, our screen position dot y is going to equal zero. So we're going to flip the y's based on where we are. We'll do the same thing with our x. Screen pose dot x equals one. Else if screen pose dot x is greater than one. Screen pose dot x equals zero. And then let's do transform position equals cam dot viewport to oops, viewport to world point. And there's our screen position that we created. Okay. Okay. Uh, I made a small mistake here. This is cam world to viewport point. Don't get this wrong. Otherwise you'll have a million asteroids get generated and your game will come to a screeching halt. Okay, we have our asteroids. Boom. Boom. Okay. And let's stop this before it gets crazy. We don't have a limit on the number of asteroids we're creating. So when these guys start colliding, it will just continue to create more and more asteroids. So get your hand on that pause button, or maybe don't even try this. Just look at what I've created. And then let's limit those asteroids from generating over and over. Okay, so in order to do that, let's add a new property. We're gonna call it lives. And we'll make another serialized field. We're going to call it, make it an integer. We're going to call it lives. We're going to set it equal to one by default. And then let's see, when we collide on our trigger, we will first check if lives is greater than zero, then we can generate our asteroids. And every time we generate an asteroid, we are going to 
grab that asteroid dot get component dot asteroid controller dot lives and subtract one from that. Okay, so this should allow these asteroids to die off after a certain amount of time. Okay, or after a certain amount of collisions. It's just one right now. Okay. So there we go. There's one asteroid. It'll never explode because there's nothing to hit. I'm feeling much better about that. Okay, let's do this one more time just to watch it in action. Okay, you can see tons of asteroids were created in the in the hierarchy and then they all hit each other and and died. I'm not sure what's going on there. There's some random asteroid in there. It looks like we still have big explosion effect just alive. Maybe it didn't get destroyed properly. Okay, let's take another look. So we've got big explosion effects. And those seem to have taken care of each other. There's a really close, here we go. Okay, so that all worked fine. There is a bug there somewhere, but we can uh, look at that and try and tackle that in the next tutorial. Okay, I hope this was helpful and gave you a little more progress. All right, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.